So I've worked on a little improvement on the, the data collection side for Netas NMP. Um, the idea was basically to have a way to have a drop-in folder on the Netas NMP agent side where you can drop in scripts and these scripts um, will provide some key value pairs and these key value pairs will automatically get collected by OpenNMS and stored inside the RDs. So I've come up with a side project for OpenNMS, which is not directly included in the OpenNMS source tree, um, but you can install an extension to the agent and it can install an extension to OpenNMS by dropping in um, a jar into the lib directory. <coughs> And yeah, let me show that. So um, the first thing is I've extended the um, net as an MP agent with a pass persist rule. So there is a Java agent extension running beside the net as an MP doing all that stuff. And it's just started once and running all the time and communicating back and forth with net, adams, net as an MP. And what it does is it looks it the etc snmp open nms folder and scans for scripts and these scripts are executed using the java scripting jsr223 um, engines so if we look at one of these scripts um, each of the scripts can provide results just add them to a result container um, and it also can control the caching of the results, so we'll come back to that later. And all these values are exported using um, NetSNMP. So if you do a walk against the special OpenNMS private enterprise MIP, <coughs> you will get a kind of table, it's not a real table, um, with all this data. And I have also have an additional... Um, data collection for OpenNMS, also running on that box. It's um, located somewhere here. So we can do just uh, collection configuration and have an SNMP ext data collection, um, which is bound to the interface, collecting all the data automatically and storing them in the SNMP folder using the name you're providing in the scripts. So if we look at opt open nms share rd snmp uh, i think node 3 has one of them so you can find things like that one like these um they are directly coming from the scripts so it's part of this the name of the script um and then the name of the metric declared inside the script is directly attached to it so every time i can just add it let's say SNMP open NMS, um, the test groovy script, and just add another results at, I don't know, counter thingy to that, or let's add a gorge to that and call that demo and give it a value of, I don't know, 42. And then I just save the script, oh no, I have to do that at root, sorry. It's um should work, I think, hopefully. Yes. Um and now if I if I query the <coughs> do the SNMP walk against that table again, I can see a test, uh, test demo, and according to that, I can see the value 42. And now if I do a walk, uh, have a look at the OpenNMS resources, I should see, hopefully, a test demo, JRB, rightly generated just in time mm -hmm. the thing gets updated. So this, this allows, the cool thing on that is it allows you to, um, provide craft definitions for that very easily because you can just use the, the name mapping on that and um, using that you have, it's a very simple way to to extend the functionality of SNMP um, by just doing, yeah, dropping in shared small snippets um, and everything else happens automatically. Um, yeah, of course. It's Right, it's just 
that line for the It's as an MPX10, so it's bound to that service like that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the only thing you have to do is just bound the service to one of your as an MPX. Right. So that's the initial setup just to do once. Um, the whole project is currently, if you go to the. Um, There it is, to the wiki page of the project. Um, they can find the link to the to the GitHub repository and there's already a readme available describing the installation procedure and how to write snippets. But at the moment, all, everything <coughs> stored in the node directly, there's no generic resources and pages? Um, currently not. I'm thinking about a way on how to do that, but currently it's not level data only. Is that going to work with store by group? Um, I think so. Okay. So the 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 thing um it's currently stored is there's one group per um resource returned. So it should work with store by group and the group just have one value. Mm -hmm. Maybe the resource could be the name of a script or something. Um yeah, maybe. It's a little bit hard to figure out. I'm, I'm thinking about changing the, the way the structures are returned currently because what I'm doing now is I use the uh, name of the script as a prefix mm -hmm. and then I have to find a way to separate them again or something like that. I, I, will, I will think about that. I think so, definitely. Um, yeah. So it shouldn't be too hard to make it an additional RPM um, or two additional RPMs, one for the OpenNMS side, one for the NetAssent PH inside. Right. So you can then push it out with right. And then, yeah, you have a way, or you have to find a way on how to provide the scripts. Maybe we can also do a prefabricated bundle of scripts for OpenNMS Meridian or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, or, yeah, shouldn't be too hard to integrate. My mind, <laughs> 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 so hopefully that's a nice or a better way to, to get things like uh, the performance state of applications into SNMP right. without having the, the mess of using, I don't know, HTTP collector for parsing strange things out of the HD, uh, Apache status page or something like that. So and you have to go through the process of building that complicated configuration and tokenizing. Right. Networks. And another benefit is is that um, the communication between, let's say, you want to monitor the, the Apache 2 status page, it's just localhost because the, the, the agent is running on the local machine and you don't have to open that on, on a management interface or something like that. So... Hopefully we will see some cool Maybe things. USB3 or something like that was a secure area. Right. Yeah. Do the, the GSR scripts, do they run on demand or is there a way to, to make them on a, say, like on a time basis? Um, currently, the there are two caching mechanisms currently doing things on that. So there is, a, I think, per default five seconds cache on the NetSNMP agent side. Mm -hmm. um, and each of the scripts itself <coughs> excuse me, um, has its own cache because um, I need that technically because if I'm building the tree, I have to run the script once for the names and one for the, for the values itself. To get rid of that, I built in some caching, and then I, I see a, a better use case. So currently, the scripts can control its own caching um, by specifying a TTL for the cache. Mm -hmm. um, so this will also cache the result of the whole script and um, prevents the script from getting re-executed again and again. So it also covers the use case um, 
which is discussed quite a lot for monitoring su available system updates. It's quite a heavy task to do so because you have to download the list of available packages and doing a compare and it takes a couple of seconds. Um, and if you're doing it with this mechanism, you can just say, okay, I want to have a cache value or a cache lifetime from, I don't know, an hour or something like that. And um, the, the extent will, will cache the results and don't call the scripts again. So, um, but if you change it, the, the files on the file systems, you don't have to restart the agent or something like that. It will catch up automatically. And if you change the file, the cache will be purged. So it, it's really nice for development. Mm -hmm. um, every time you enter, uh, add a script or something like that, it's, the values will be available automatically just that time. Um, there are two ways to do so. Um, the first thing is you can just, if you have a look at the, uh, um, where it is, I think that's one. You can just, as it's a, a, a regular Java call, you can just add your libraries to the class pass using that. Um, that's the easiest way or the basic way. Um, another way is the Groovy scripting allows to pull in Maven dependencies right in the time they are running um, using annotations. So I think that's the way for more complex thing to get the dependencies into. Um, and you should use the, the class pathway to only provide additional um, implementations for different scripting languages. Or maybe the, pa the packaging can do that too. So it's Um, currently, Groovy and JavaScript, as it's included in the standard OpenJDK package. Um, yeah, it's more a question of bundling, not supporting it in a technical way. Well, I guess that's a good question. This is OpenJDK. You don't really need Oracle. It's more on the agent side. Right. It's, um, it runs on uh, OpenJDK version 8, 1.8, perfectly well. Right, so you can, or you can define um, a meta dependency again, uh, an arbitrary JavaScript, uh, Java JDK version eight and higher. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.